It started with a vision. Years of design, dedication, and sheer hard work have now built to this. The F-50 wing-sailed catamaran. Six of the world's fastest boats. Boats that fly. One design for all. An engineering masterpiece. Supreme athletes from six countries face off in the most thrilling global race on water. This is sailing redefined. This is nation versus nation. This is Sail GP. Season one begins here in Sydney. Hello and welcome to the very first event of a brand new championship. The iconic backdrop of Sydney Harbour played host to the F-50 fleet as it redefined the sport of sailing. It was the first of five events in the 2019 Sail GP season and the teams were raring to go. Hi, I'm Tom Slingsby. The Australian Sail GP team is professional, competitive, patriotic. I'm Phil Robertson. The Chinese Sail GP team is... Young, multicultural and fresh. Dylan Fletcher and the British team are raw, proud, relentless, hungry. Is that for? I'm Nathan Adderidge, Japan's Sail GP team. Determined, resourceful, respectful. I'm Ron Kirby. The United States Sail GP team is young, humble, experienced, not experienced, that's Tom's. Damn it! I'm Billy Besson. The French Sail GP team is competitive, patriotic, fun. <laughs> we'll be bringing you all of the drama from two action-packed days of racing. Day one featured three event races when all six boats lined up together. And on day two, there were two further event races before the top two teams went head-to-head -head in the final match race. It was a beautiful day here in Sydney Harbour for the opening race of the Sail GP Championship. Commentary is with Shirley Robertson, Alistair Eakin and Sir Russell Coates. This is the kind of course that we'll be looking at. As usual, that first thrilling reach across wind, a couple of legs upwind and downwind due to finish on the downwind leg. And they're across the line, and the Chinese, in fact, it is, who have started the fastest. The French have done extremely well. The Australians tucked in behind, but not really with enormous boat speed as yet. The Chinese, though, first to get up on the foil, Shirley. Ali, speed is the king, and they timed that run from a long way out. Absolutely owned the first start here in Sydney. The start of a brand new sailing adventure, Sail GP is up and running down under and it is the french who are leading the charge to mark one with the chinese close alongside what a sight six boats sweeping across sydney harbour and round the first mark it is billy besson considered something of an outsider but making a storming start Terrific bit of work done by Nathan Outridge, the Australian who's in charge of the Japanese boat. Coming close to the boundary, pushing the boundaries and on collision course with the Chinese. Goodness, how close that is between Japan and China. And once again, they're having to bear away and avoid confrontation. Involved in a right royal tussle as the French head to the boundary edge themselves. Here we're seeing the replay of that very, very tight cross between the Japanese and the Chinese. It goes without saying, they do everything in their powers to avoid 
coming together, not least because they're incredibly expensive boats and they've only got one of them. Check how far behind the Australians are. Wow. Definitely against the form. Yep, they're a long way back and Tom Slingsby will not be a happy man. The competitive fire burns very bright indeed. Top of your screen, top towards the left, the Australians. Another very tight crossing between the French and the British boats. Well, the French team here, led by Billy Bisson, four times world champion in the, in the small foiling boat in the Olympic Games. And he's brought with him his crew from the Olympics, Marie Rieu. She's the flight controller. And, uh, you know, it's all about co communications and trust. And he was absolutely the, the first call. On board with the Japanese. The grind is up front, enabling the wing trimmer to do his job tucked in behind them with the rope on that winch just adjusting things as necessary so what a start to the sydney sail gp for the japanese outfit led by nathan outridge and from not the best of starts they have come flying through the fleet and have sailed a very accomplished race. Race one of Sail GP in Sydney, won yeah, by the Japanese, done. who pocket the full 10 points. <laughs> Terrific start and what that might do to confidence levels and belief as they head through the next couple of races and into tomorrow and of course thereafter at the second event in San Francisco, followed by New York and Cowes and Marseille for the big money race at the end. France in the meantime have slowed right up, but they've maintained their position in the fleet. Now what's going on here? We have um, an interesting scenario for the French. Shirley, thoughts? Well, I'm not sure what they're thinking, but they should have crossed that line. They should have gone through the gate to finish the race, and they seem to have sailed off to the left-hand side. Nathan, many congratulations. Great to get off to a, a winning start. What was the, the key moment for you? Because you didn't have the best of starts. And then it went back left. Well, we actually had quite a shocking start. Um, got too close to the line and everyone went straight past us. But I think that key race winning move was those first two jibes. The first jibe inside the fleet into the fresh air behind Shark Island. And then, you know, we had a really close situation with Phil. I thought we were going to cut his rudder off at one point, but um, managed to get around him. And then we were just sort of, you know, keeping the fleet in check. So, um, you know, really good to post the first win. So confirmation of the results from the first race. Japan out in front, helmed by Nathan Outridge. China tucked in right behind them in second. Great Britain in third. Tom Slingsby, a disappointing start for the Australian, so fancied before the race. The United States in fifth and France failing to cross the finish line in sixth. But all the mistakes were put down to experience as the boats headed back to the start line for the second race. of these boats up on the foils as they hit the start line. It is Japan in front from Australia and Great Britain. The Chinese going great guns as well. OCS the USA, Japan, the back OCS, Japan, as USA, the Japanese head off USA towards reference, the boundary on a slightly different route to everybody else. Well, the Japanese got a, a penalty there over slightly early and they will have to slow at least one boat length back on the rest of the fleet. A very unfortunate penalty for Nathan Outridge and Japan right OCS at the Japan outset. But what a sight USA. that is as they head to Mark 1, the drag race, well and truly up and running. Chinese making up a bit of ground on the British boat at the moment. Out to the side of them. 
Uh, at what stage did these sailors begin to look over their shoulder, Shirley, and take a, a clear view as to what the other boats are doing and, and the tactics surrounding all of that? Because, of course, the British potentially here are in a position where they could affect the wind of the Chinese boat. They're thinking about that, discussing it all the time. And they're not going, you know, 50 miles an hour today, so they've got a little more thinking time. Each boat will also have a, a tactician. Generally, it's the flight controller. And he has, uh, yeah, his time to, to plan the attack. Another very slick maneuver from those in green and gold. Slingsby, an America's Cup winner in 2013 with the USA. His tactician performed the same role in 2017 in Bermuda as well. Let's go for it. Tight race in behind them between the, the French, the USA and China also in the mix. And uh, the Japanese coming up on the rails as well. Billy Bisson is fast. Team France, are, they have speed. <laughs> they should stop turning the corners, I think. You know, they really have a kind of natural speed to, to make the boat go quickly. Really good pace being picked up here by the Japanese as they head towards the gate. The Australians are, are well clear at this point. The French trying to hunt them down. Relatively tight crossing between the British and the Japanese and indeed the USA. The Chinese have, uh, have slowed up a little bit. But this is a, a real tussle in the middle of the fleet. That's anybody's. Well, battle is joined. Make no mistake about that between Nathan Atridge and the Japanese crew and Tom Slingsby in the Australian boat. The two old rivals going head to head. The Japanese just looking a little bit unstable as uh, they tack up wind. Australia have gone right to the boundary edge. But look at the gain the Japanese have made, Shirley. I mean, that is a sensational effort. There's a little bit of pressure just up there. Here we are with the Australians. It's going to be very interesting to see exactly how this plays out. Nathan Outridge, the first to jibe, and the Australians very, very tight to the mark. They're going to slow up here, but they're probably going to have enough to get through. And confirmation, eventually, a little later than advertised, it must be said. Out in front and claiming the victory. That was a tight decision by Tom Slingsby, but how relieved he will be to have held off the challenge of the Japanese and claimed his first win here in Sydney Harbour. Japanese in second place and uh, a good old battle between the two. The battle for third is a tasty one. Britain and the USA going head to head. Britain taking them on, taking them on and doing it very effectively. A little bit of extra pressure, perhaps. A good response from the USA as well. And this is where the, the sailing can be dramatic as well. We've finished the race with first and second, Shirley, but the, the battles further down the fleet can be just as absorbing. And Rome, Rome Kirby's done well here. He's just sort of slid the boat down. He's closed off that door to, to Dylan Fletcher and the British team, and defending his third very well. So a third place finish for the USA. And uh, one more tight-ish jibe for the British. Dylan Fletcher comes home in fourth place for Great Britain. So let's take a look at the leaderboard after two races. Japan, helmed by Nathan Outridge, are just ahead of Australia. Great Britain down in third place on 15 points. China on 14, still stood on that great first race result. Rome Kirby improves with the third place in the second race, but Billy Besson down there in sixth. This new class of boat makes huge demands on the athletes that sail them, and there's a new generation of bright young things eager to get their hands on these sleek carbon fibre racing machines. 
I got the British Sail GP helmsman Dylan Fletcher to show me around. So we're going to go up with BMG, bear away to reach. Copy that. For such big boats, the first thing that strikes me is how small this area is. It's actually really compact. Copy that. Copy. Building here. The actual cockpits are quite small because the boat's so light and we don't need much volume in the hull for when we're sailing. Grinders working the uh, handles at the front. Yeah, so you've got position one and position two. Um, you've got Matt and Gottrell, a.k.a. Shrek, and Rich Mason up there. So, yeah, they'll be grinding the two winch handles on e each side. That winch handle is driving this drum here. This is the winch. And, and that's that, pulling in the wing. And that's going to be pulling the massive wing that you see, the 24 metres of wing. Wing trimmer sits here, and they're controlling this wing sheet. So these guys at the front have got a real hard physical job, and Chris has got, you know, the more technical job. It looks more like a shuttle. Yeah, there's a lot of displays that we've got going on. There's lots of different... Everyone's got their different controls and their buttons. We've got a joystick, you know. I've never sailed a boat with a joystick before, so it is futuristic, but you see that with the speed of the boats and how fast they go for such a small amount of wind. When we're coming up to attack, for example, um, the first thing that I say is stand by. Stand by! And that means that we're about to start tacking. So what happens is Chris uh, in position four, which is trimming the wing, and Shrek in position one, grinder, they get up and they sprint across the boat. I'll be Chris. OK, so I go across here. So you run across, get in the cockpit, and shout clear. In the time that they've been running across the boat, I've dropped the board. Board down. As it starts to come down, Stu, in uh, the flight controller position three, says lock. Lock. As soon as he says lock, I start turning. Turning! Turning! And as soon as we're through the turn, I'll say, uh, on angle, then myself and Rich run over the boat. And then once we're both up, I then say, my rake, and then Stu comes up. It's so choreographed, isn't it? OK, stand by for the rake of reach, Stand by. On to the final race of the day, and Tom Slingsby in the Australian boat was starting to make his presence felt. Shirley and Alistair have the commentary. Beautiful start. A little start. bit of uh, bully boy tactics, if you like, from the Australians as they head over the start line in fine style. The British in second place. The Japanese chasing them down, but with nothing like the same boat speed at the moment. The USA, China and France struggling off the line a little bit, and Billy Besson's day does not seem to be getting any better. Just hovering along at around about 10 knots, but in stark contrast, Australia flying. That's another very determined, punchy start from Tom Slingsby. Little doubt that he was stung into action after race one. Uh, yeah, sorry, yours. Turning up in two, one, turning up. And just look at the way they're rounding the mark. That is, that is just about textbook, isn't it? <laughs> they made it look easy. Not easy to keep the platform absolutely um, level throughout all that and, and keep your pace, but lovely job by the Australian team. Everybody in perfect harmony. Well, the Japanese slowing right up. They're still on the uh, the upwind leg. The Australians are long gone on the downwind leg. And there's nobody to touch Tom Slingsby and crew at the moment. Nathan Asher is the closest, but with a heck of a job on his hands. Tight to the boundary and a lot of ground to make up, some 250 metres between Australia and Japan. The Australians close to closing the deal here on day one. 
day that they will be pretty pleased with, you would suggest, bouncing back from that fourth place in race one. The Japanese have not raced well. I mean, they go fast, the maneuvers are really smooth, but just to me, not. They haven't nailed any of the starts. They haven't dominated this race course like perhaps we, we expected from them. Maybe they're just relying on their pace. So the Aussies heading for the finish line. Yeah. They could be on the lap before. Okay, copy. Okay. Some interesting characters on board there, yeah. by the way. Kai Hurst, okay, one of the grinders at the front line. of your uh, your shot there, is, is a man who's taken part in the America's Cup, but he's also an Olympic swimmer, and he's won four separate Australian Ironman titles. He's a useful man to have, generating the uh, the power that allows the wing trimmer to do his bit. Yours, Langer. Just in front of him, Jason Waterhouse, silver medalist in Rio. In, in the sort of scaled down version of these bows, so no stranger to, to this kind of pace. So the Australians heading to the finish line, and the Chinese don't be fooled by their presence, they've been lapped. The Australians across the line in commanding style, and it is the Aussies dominating down under on day one of Sail GP in Sydney. Tom Slingsby, terrific effort from him and his crew. Fourth in race one, but winning race two and race three. Fabulous effort. No doubt, plenty to take out of those three races. They will be forensic in their analysis, but as a building block, doesn't get a whole lot better. And they came to Ali with confidence. The last two starts, they, they commanded that. They knew where they wanted to be, and they, they bossed. <laughs> they, they bossed everyone else around, even Nathan Oteridge, who we're looking at here. Uh, he has a lot to think about tonight. Stay with it, Nathan. He talks mate, about mate. the competitive nice. spirit, and uh, Nathan Oteridge will not be happy that his rival has stolen the headlines after a wonderful start. But they've been tremendously consistent, and they will be taking a great deal of comfort from that. I think we are going to see a real ding dong between these two as the months play out in Sail GP across the different events. Just one point separating those two on the leaderboard now. Japan coming home in second place behind Australia. Uh, you've raced a, a, a terrific race there, also in race two. Um, how much were you spurred on by what happened in the first race? Right <laughs> Honestly, if you saw any of the onboard comms in the first race, I was pretty annoyed. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we improved every race, and uh, that was a really good race for us, our best one yet. So, so tell us, um, give us a little flavour of exactly what you did in, in races two and three that you, you didn't manage to pull off in the first outing. We were just making uh, easy mistakes. We uh, we weren't driving well. Our manoeuvres weren't good. We've got to go back and look at that in the light. The light of the wind, the worse we were going. So we came good at the end, and uh, more breeze, the better for us Aussies. A dramatic day of racing here on Sydney Harbour. Let's see how they stand. Japan out in front, Nathan Outridge's consistency paying off. Just behind him, Tom Slingsby with two wins. Dylan Fletcher keeping Great Britain in third. Rome Kirby and the United States boat in fourth. China fifth and Billy Besson still struggling down there in sixth. The first day of the Sydney Sail GP draws to a close and things are now perfectly set up for the exciting climax.